All right. So why don't you just like introduce uh, yourself and where are we at here? For sure. Uh, I'm James Kane. Uh, we, uh, I work for Paradowski Creative, as do we all. Um, and we are hosting uh, the AIGA Design Show 25 uh, for St. Louis tomorrow at 5 p.m. That's Saturday, November 14th at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, basically, that we do a big design show every year featuring the best in St. Louis design. And um, this year with the COVID crisis still, you know, as worse as as bad as ever, I think it's uh, we're we're turning to a virtual event. Very cool. Maybe yeah, Shelby and Andy, you can also introduce yourselves. What you do, what you did here. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Shelby. I also work at Paradowski. Um, I am on the experience design team, and I was a part of concepting and laying out the space um, overall. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm Andy Wise. Uh, I work at Paradowski with these two. I'm our vice president of creative technology and worked closely with these guys to to bring the space to life. Nice. It feels like I'm in, in like in a mall here or something like. like <laughs> so yeah, maybe you like how do you uh, orient yourself to the space that you created here? Sure. We should probably actually head outside. I okay, let's do that. Uh, our spawn point. Our spawn point is not currently where it's going to be set for oh, gotcha. the start at the show. So okay. If we all want to head up the stairs and, and out the door there. Okay. Oops. Whoa. Ah, here we go. Got stuck on the stairs. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Whoa, okay. Nice. Yeah, so this is, uh, I think, as people spawn in, it's nice to have, like, these threshold spaces so that people can kind of get oriented. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, I like this spawn point a little bit better. Yeah, I think you'll start out on this kind of platform over here uh, to our to our left there, and you'll have a big kind of uh, panoramic view of, of the entire scene from there, including we've got actually the St. Louis skyline off in the sky. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to go look at that real quick because that sounds interesting. So, yeah, you guys are all based in St. Louis, and I know that you did the um, the poster. The What was it called? The It was something about uh, COVID posters, but what was the name of that again? That was the apart poster show. Apart poster show. That's right. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, oh, nice. Yeah. I really like, um, you know, having to walk into this space because now I, uh, get a sense. Where's the skyline? I don't see the skyline. It's, uh, I think it's being blocked right now by those, uh, those geometric shapes over there. Oh, okay. Kind of behind the trees. Oh, okay. Cool. So should we uh, walk in now or? Sure. This. Uh... So how would you describe this shape? It's like sort of like a sphere, but it's got like different layers. So like how, how do you describe this type of architecture here? I think um, I think part of what inspired the design of the shape of the space was um, a cloud. So we started with an abstraction of a cloud, um, build it, build several spheres together to make what looks kind of a kind of like a cloud, um, and then just started chipping away at that as the base shape. Oh wow! Nice. And so, is it just two levels, or is there more levels above us? Yeah, just the two levels. Okay. A little less grand in scale than the apart poster show. Um, but I think a little more focused as well, and a little more uh, consistent on the design side. Yeah, it was nice to, I, I wonder, like, I'd like the, how, um, like, if we were to come into this space, you could stand here and pretty much get a good sense of who was here and where they're at. Um, I mean, there's lots of space outside as well, but um, it's kind of nice to have this, enclosed area so that if you're trying to meet up with folks um, or really create it into a social experience, then it feels like this circular design like this and having these two tiered layers, like I feel like I get a good sense of this space as I'm standing here. 
for sure. I think this is a really nice scale and size uh, and setting for the kind of like 25 person ish gallery we, setting we can we can fit into the hubs rooms right now. So, right. And so, uh, tell me about the art and like what's the backstory for what what is this art here that we're looking at here? Um, Shelby, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I'm just going to, if we could just kind of walk along, just to kind of look at stuff yeah. here. Yeah, so this sculpture that's kind of moving in the center over here is um, actually user generated. Um, so what we did was added a little um, modal towards the bottom. Yeah, so you can, it's a fun little um, way to shake it up. And as well as it asks the question, you know, what about working in St. Louis inspires you? And people are able to insert their message and it'll appear in the ever evolving sculpture as more of these um, responses get tagged throughout the night. Okay. So that's the, that's the statue there. What about all the art that's on the wall? Where is this, all, where's this all, all this art from? This is all um, local designers, agencies, student work, independent freelancers. Everyone's able to submit um, for the show in varying categories. And these are just the ones that we had um, judges from, three judges from across the country select um, which ones would be put into the show. So this is kind of the curated um, show. And there's two winners that are selected at the end um, for best in show, one being a professional and one being a student. I see. And is this a, an existing organization? I saw some letters outside, but I didn't quite catch them. It was something yeah. like... Um, it's AIGA, which is um, a national organization for design. But each city, um, each major city has its own chapter. So this is the St. Louis chapters show. I see. So this is something that you would normally gather uh, and get together and do each year. Is that right? Or, or is this a new event that's totally virtual? Yep, this is um, an existing show, and I think this is the 25th show, actually, and the first virtual. Okay. So it's all these different designers, and you've basically just created this art gallery to kind of, like, show off all the different work that of all these people that have submitted, like, a little portfolio that then you're just showing here on the wall with... As I, as I link over, I can click on the link, and I presume it would take us to, take me to their website. That will take you to actually a project page that will house all of their submission photos or videos, if there are any, as well as um, the description of the project. So oh, we'll okay. be able to link off and watch videos that we weren't able to have. Oh, I see. Yet. I'm going to try to click on one, and it opens up another page. I see. So this is uh, still all part. Oh, it's a, S a St. Louis Design Show project. Mm, it's got all these different photos and stuff. Okay. So... Okay. So you got even more, if you want to go get more information and maybe a link off to their site, you can get more information, videos yeah, and whatnot. That was a great way to show, um, web work that couldn't necessarily be, um, shown in video format or URLs, um, as well as, you know, TV spots and things like that, where it would be a little heavy on, um, the loading time in this environment. So we decided to have it easily accessible um, from the space still, but in its own URLs. Right. Nice. Yeah, there's something that's interesting because um, as things are put up onto a wall and I'm walking around in what feels like a museum, it gives it like extra weight than just sifting through like a bunch of websites. <laughs> you know, it's like, it actually makes it feel like it's an art show. Uh, rather than just a bunch of marketing websites or something. Sure. And it's really, it's really cool when you get a large group of people in here and you start getting that kind of party atmosphere audio, you know, hearing different conversations from different areas and being able to wander amongst groups and really bring to get people together in, in a space is, is one of the most amazing parts of these projects. Nice. And Andy, what were you working on on this project again? What was uh, what was some of the stuff that you were making? Well, mostly I was trying to stay out of the way, but I <laughs> but I worked uh, with James and with Shelby and the rest of our team just to kind of oversee creative vision for the project. Um, and push, I pushed our team pretty hard to, uh, to implement some new features that out of the box 
um, Mozilla's hubs platform doesn't doesn't allow. So, you know, things like the interactive sculpture that you saw down below. Yeah. Uh, if we go downstairs, we can also check out the um, there's kind of a selfie station that we set up. Yeah, I think that the um, the thing that I don't see as much in a lot of hubs worlds is that level of interactivity because usually things are so locked down that there's no real interactivity or engagement. But sure. um, and can yeah. tonight uh, for for right now or for tomorrow night for the actual debut, we're actually going to have a scripted awards moment. So right at five thirty p.m. I believe central. Um, we're going to announce the winners and a uh, confetti will fall from the sky and a video will pop up oh, cool. and, uh, with a, with, with a judge explaining, uh, who won and what we're doing here and all that. I um, see. So really trying to take that interactivity and that scripted content stuff to another level in, in these spaces. Right. So having different JavaScript actions take place at specific moments that mm -hmm. can kind of launch into different stuff. That's cool. Exactly. Just triggering triggering content remotely, basically. Okay. Um, yeah, for all users. Nice. That's so cool. This again, this is uh, the work that you're doing there is really great. Um, with the, you know, building these worlds, and you know, I imagine you did something similar, which was to upload like one file that has everything all together with one texture and everything. Is that like a lot of optimization and blender and then basically Absolutely. uploading a, the binary here? That's, that's still true. Yes. Uh, although I would say that the blender side, the tooling there has improved so much since we've done the apart show. Um, we're, we're able to use actual light maps now, which is why we can use uh, higher res textures without, uh, because the UV chase, the UV, space doesn't have to be it can overlap it doesn't have to be unique right um, with with actual light maps and as well we're pushing performance in this space because uh, everything you see has been um converted to use basis encoded textures, oh cool which saves uh saves a ton of memory uh in terms of download and uh just render time yeah, I know uh, some of the creators of Basis, and, and when you use the Basis, what do you what do you have to do to actually like implement that compression scheme uh, for the textures? Yeah, so they have a command line interface tool, uh, Basis S, to where you can you know uh, run your textures through it manually. What we did, it's really awesome, or, or it's still in development, but uh, coming along really well, is make an automated conversion tool. So we just dump the gltf file straight into this converter it marches through every single texture in there it converts it all repackages it with the hubs metadata because there is some like hub specific um tags you have to add basically but um yeah that's that's the approach we're taking so that's a, like a command line automated script on the server side that you have with the hubs integration so that whenever you upload a uh, GLTF, then it automatically kicks off and compresses it, or how do you, where do you do that? Uh, that's funny. That was Andy had the idea to move it server side today, but uh, no, it's it's currently just a a tool, a native app tool okay. that runs on our machines, you know, post Blender process. So then from the converter, it goes into Spoke. So that's gotcha. that's the extra step there. Okay, yeah, you just sort of run that script and it converts everything. Mm -hmm. right. One of the great. Um, improvements in the in the blender pipeline that james was mentioning earlier there have been several but one of the most immediately noticeable was uh the fact that denoising of textures and materials is uh, is a lot easier than it used to be so whereas with the apart show we had to we had just huge massive render times <laughs> to get the quality that we wanted and get the noise out of everything you'll notice that everything is relatively smooth um, throughout the space right now and that's in large part to those improvements within Blender. Yeah, as as I'm uh, standing in this space, uh, we're on the, the basement area now, my eye keeps getting drawn over to this uh, area here because it's such a interesting little cutout with like a, a mural here. But, um, oh, with a little selfie. <laughs> that's cool. Set your yeah. avatar. So you yeah, take a we photo. we modified the hub's camera to basically not spit out 3d photos but to instead spit the photos to an api where you can just log on to our website um and kind of here why don't we take one <laughs> i just took a photo uh, we, can, we can log on to the website and um check it out there nice access externally 
yeah, but this, this, uh, oh, that's interesting. I just wanted to be in this space just because it's, it's kind of an interesting shape. It's like a little cutout, yeah, a little Shelby, bowl. You talk about the artist that made this piece. Yeah, so um, there's actually a muralist on the AIGA board um, that we asked him to see if he would be able to create a piece specific to um, this space. And he kind of took our existing branding and the theme of the show and, and ran with it and came up with this beautiful, colorful, and immersive mural that, like you said, kind of draws people in. Yeah, it's it's really striking in terms of the color and the composition, the contrast, and but also the this the architecture of this little space because you have the bowl that's out here, and you kind of see the little other bowls. But yeah, it's it's just um, it's just kind of interesting shape. I don't I don't see a lot of physical architecture that is looks like this, and so it feels like a very distinct type of virtual architecture, which would probably be possible to do this, but. I don't know what the angles that this is laying and everything. It'd probably be, you know, maybe a lot harder to actually like do some of this angles and stuff within physical reality. So it's just kind of like, there would be a lot of, there would be a lot of tension on that uh, hinge over there. This is kind of like a huge clamshell design on top. <laughs> yeah. The actual connection is right over by the door. So I don't know if, if that's physically possible, but I, I do think it works well here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm gonna keep keep moving around here and just check out all the other spaces here because you've got more art down here, little uh, spaces, uh, little seats. Although I don't know if you can actually sit down, uh, <laughs> but it. Um, yeah, I, 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 one of the things that I always am curious about when spaces like this is the types of like dynamic and organic clustering that happens and whether or not it, it feels like because it's a big circular space, what I would imagine is that people can self-select by getting enough distance away to be able to not like get up right in next to somebody and start talking and interrupting a conversation. I think that's probably still to this day that you don't have a good intuition as to how far your voice carries in spaces like this. And so it'll be interesting just to see as people are kind of milling about if they're able to like figure out organically, like what's a comfortable distance to be away from people. Um, but in terms of using the architecture to help guide people into that, I'm not sure if it's necessarily clear um, for me, at least when I see this, like how far away sort of where it feels comfortable as an example to kind of cluster, because sometimes like you can start to feel a little claustrophobic when you're standing in different spaces. So yeah, there are a lot of things to balance there of making it sure that people feel comfortable of just kind of like organically clustering while also having the literacy of each of the people that are here, making sure that, you know, they don't have people that are just like, uh, uh, interrupting your conversation by getting too close and carrying on a conversation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that type of like social etiquette and social dynamics, I think is still, still early and, what I'd say is in a, like an infant stage, but also just from a design perspective, how to really like uh, mitigate that and make that easier. Yeah, it's been it's been fascinating to to watch people use the space and see how they do organically cluster. This this space is a pretty huge departure from the the room based environment that we had for the apart show, for example, where you know there's there's kind of an implied clustering framework you, you can you can choose to exit a room or be in a room and be around those people this space on the other hand is very open-ended but i think um i think the, the addition of having an external environment the, uh, something that feels like you're stepping outside will probably be a welcome addition for folks just to get a breath from everything going on inside yeah i have to I have yeah, to say i have I, I, fire animations go ahead can sorry Oh, I was just going to say just, you know, I'm, I'm in a 2D screen, but I imagine when I'm in VR that it's just going to feel more comfortable to hang out in a space. I think the, mm. the square spaces that were in the previous space, although the art was great and it was very interesting to go from space to space, I wouldn't say there was any one room that I just like felt drawn to just kind of hang out in. But I think that 
the circular design of this room just feels a lot more comfortable to just kind of like hang out and, and be in one spot and kind of, you know, have this kind of cocktail party clustering effect. Awesome. As far as like people knowing how far their voice is carrying, that definitely is a, a sticking point. Um, I think one suggestion I've seen in the hubs discord is some type of, uh, maybe like a floor, a, a ground floor plane, um, sphere radius. So you could see maybe as the dis the total distance your voice is going to carry, or maybe different zones surrounding you in a toggles toggleable state. But, um, yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting question. And I, I think device device, device to device, it's, it's quite different too. So, um, what work the settings that work for VR headset probably maybe not as ideal for a desktop user. So a lot of considerations there, but um, definitely something we're trying to think about. Yeah, and there's an income voice volume as well that you can set. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've seen is if you kind of think about um, like a circular stair that that goes down, so that you know you kind of organically create circles that are kind of the optimal la layer to be able to cluster around um and little design elements like that to help help do that but again the 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 range of fluency when it comes to uh how people are able to how sophisticated they are and be able to figure that out on their own you know there's certainly a wide range of folks that you know have hundreds or thousands of hours of time in VR chat versus, you know, people that are just coming in here for the first time. So it's quite a, a big variance there. But, um, yeah. And you got some little fish over here. That's cool. <laughs> Moving around some, some dynamic elements here. Um, but cool. Well, this is a good, um, a good quick tour here. And, uh, just like recording a video. And so as we sort of get to the end here, I'm just curious if you uh, have any sort of closing thoughts of, you know, takeaways that you have from, you know, designing this, this space here. Uh, shoot. I can start, I guess. Um, really proud of the team for the work we've done on this space and, and more like it, we're getting more and more client interest um, and seeing more and more brands step up and get interested in spaces like this. Uh, which is what our agency focuses on. So that's been really cool and rewarding to see. But um, with every project, I just think we're trying to push the limits more in terms of what's possible for a WebXR social space. So um, that's my goal. And I think we've we've achieved it this time, thanks to the great design from the creative team here and and some cool technical improvements we've made as well. So those are my, those are my takeaways. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow night. I hope, uh, I th I'm sure it's going to be a great time. Well said, James. Andy or Shelby, you have any other takeaways? Um, I think James pretty much covered it. Um, it was a very collaborative <laughs> effort, um, as like he was saying, as we continue building these spaces and learning and um, implementing new technologies. It's it's just really interesting to see how um, we all grow as a team and sort of work through this stuff together and get such great results. So. Like James was saying, I'm very excited for tomorrow and I hope everyone enjoys it and gets as much fun out of it as we did making it. Cool. Well, as I'm uh, in this space and thinking about this intersection between WebXR and the larger web design community, it just reaffirms to me that in the future we're going to be meeting folks that have like explicit like architectural backgrounds and virtual architecture as well and that'll be interesting to see how there's a continual fusion of these different disciplines that are coming in and starting to help design spaces like this because you know i can definitely feel like a bit of that architectural uh spatial design uh evolution from the first to the second here and uh uh, for me, I just get excited about where this is all going to go because it will probably be like looking back on this space and, you know, and have it be so like elementary in terms of where it ends up going in the end. Um, but yeah, just what we hope it's kind of like any new technology. The first, you know, our first experience with this was can we do it? And uh, every experience after that was how can how can we make it amazing and how can we make it better? So. Uh, yeah, cool. hopefully we look back on this and with great disappointment and <laughs> see a lot of things that we, we could have improved had we known. 
but uh, it should be a fun night tomorrow night. And what what time does it start tomorrow uh, in Central Time? 5 p.m. Central, Five I believe, and I think... Yep. Okay, so 5 p.m. Central, Saturday, November 14th, 2020, is the opening here. And what's the name of this space again? This is the uh, 25th AIGA St. Louis Design Show. Okay, awesome. Well, congratulations on this uh, epic job here again. And uh, again, I think what you're... Uh, agencies doing some of the most uh, innovative stuff here at WebXR, continuing to push forward uh, the medium. And uh, yeah, excited. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to drop by and check out the crowds and everything and um, and yeah, see the continued evolution of the, the hub's enterprise implementation here and uh, you know how the, the community starts to come together in these spaces. So congrats on uh, another great space and uh, yeah, have a good opening tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Cool. Ken. Thanks so much, Ken. Yeah, really appreciate you stopping by, and thanks a lot for the kind words too. Appreciate that.